What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Tammy Talks here. Love is Blind, Season 5, Episode 2. Can I talk to you for real? Y'all know the drill. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button, thumbs up the video, hop in the comment section, and leave a spoiler-free comment. A spoiler free comment is the most important part all right let's get right into it y'all so first things first milton i don't want to say milton is a little slow but milton might be a little slow so milton's on a date with lydia they got a little beach vibe situation going on and she's like hey we should hula hoop do you have like a tube he looks dead at the tube and it's like nope no tube I said, Lord, okay. And I was like, maybe he just don't want to do it. So then she's like, did you open up the, she, at first she called it a mini fridge. Then she was like the mini cooler. He's looking around. You got a cooler? I don't have no cooler. I said, come on, Jesus. What is going on, Milton? Then his old country self would say, yeah, I got an ice chest. I said, not an ice chest goodness so once we get past the awkwardness he asks her if she's having a good day she said no and he's like it's gonna be a better day because you here with me crickets <laughs> cricket y'all she don't like him she does not like milton milton seems fine and well but she doesn't like milton you know why she wants izzy i don't know why all these girls are stuck on izzy because izzy is throwing the red flags at me honey y'all hear me Izzy is throwing the red flags, but she tells him that, um, she have, well, she tells in the confessional that, you know, Izzy broke up with her and didn't give her a reason why and all this other stuff. And it's like, sis, you were not vibing, vibing, vibing with Izzy the way that you thought you were. And it's weird that you do it this much in terms of Izzy. Cause let's be real. Let's keep it, let's keep it a buck. Y'all went on one or two days. You should have picked up the context clues from your past date. That man has never been into you. Anytime you talked about, oh, we would be great together, we should be this together, we could do that, we could do this, it was always silence. Or he stuttered or he hesitated. You have to pick up context clues. I feel like Lydia wanted Izzy because she heard all the other girls in there talking about Izzy. So you can tell she's having a bad day. So Milton is like, you can, you know, you, we can talk about it. We can talk about your other connection. It's okay for you to be honest with me and vulnerable. If you want to talk about, you know, your connection, breaking it off, let's talk about it. She tells him that she wants to be seen and valued. She craves to be in love. That's everybody. That is literally everybody. I get the feeling that Lydia is looking for wrong, for looking for love in the wrong places. That's what I get. So he tells her that he likes that she's able to be outgoing and bold and very confident because that's not what he is like. People think that's what he's like, but that's really not him. So he's like excited or I don't want to say like envious, but he admires that she is able to, to be that way. So he said that he went to school in Japan and he felt stupid because he was making bad grades. He wasn't doing good um, over there. When he moved back to the States, his grades improved. He started to do a thousand percent better. Um, he started to feel more confident and stuff like that. But he's just not the confident, bold person that a lot of people think that he is I can tell because Milton gives awkward and not in a like a horrific way Milton looks like he lacks the confidence within himself it's like you ever hear like the saying or that a person no matter if, if you you it doesn't matter if a person is lying about something if they're speaking confidently about it right you ever heard a person you know they are lying through their teeth but they're they're so charismatic and they're so confident and they're standing in it that it makes you question like, damn, did, did that happen? Milton doesn't give that. So she then tells him that she wishes that she didn't know how old he is. And I'm just like, girl, if you're going to be hung up on his age, leave that man alone. Leave him alone. 
So, because he can't do nothing about it. And why would you not want to know his age? That's an important thing to know, especially if you're a person that's hung up on age. I am 38. I will be 39 in a couple of days. I don't want to date somebody that would be like 24. You know what I mean? Knowing somebody's age is important. So she now feels that she could see herself marrying him, um, but she couldn't see it a couple of days ago. And he was like, what's the difference? She lied through her teeth and said, because he's vulnerable. No, the real issue is that you... um. The real issue was that Izzy was in the cards a couple of days ago. And now that Izzy is not in the cards anymore, now (laughs) you feel like, well, damn, this is all I got because I haven't been moving on and dating with anybody else. eh." But and then she promises him to be okay with his age. But you're not, though, sis. You're not. You're not. And you're not going to work my nerve about this either. I don't want to hear nothing else about Milton's age. Either you're going to be with Milton or you're not going to be with Milton. Pick a struggle. Pick a struggle. We're not going to go back and forth with both of them, though. So then we get to JP and Taylor. So she asked to learn more about his childhood. He immediately started crying. I said, oh, (laughs) okay. So he's visibly emotional. He said that growing up, his mom was a very angry person. And while his mother did not take it out on him, she took it out on his sisters. So she would get upset. She would get, um, she would get angry and she would go in their room, wake them up, yelling, screaming, trash their room. And then she would go to work. Now, when he was younger, he didn't do anything as he got older he would go in and comfort his sisters, probably kind of, you know, help them clean up, whatever the case. He feels that his mom, because of the relationship that she had with their father, we he didn't say if his parents were married or not, but because of the re- relationship with her, with his dad, he was worried. He thinks that she was worried about her his sisters going the wrong path. So basically, I don't, I'm going to be real. I don't like your daddy. I don't want y'all to grow up and be with a man like your daddy. That's basically what I'm getting from that. So he's no longer mad at his mom. He said that his mom is in a good place. He thinks that, you know, she was just in a bad space in her life. They've, They've changed. They've grown. Everything's good. He then asks Taylor, what would be, what would she most regret not telling someone she says I love you and then he says I love you too he kind of didn't like the whole I love juice I love juice you know you ever see the episode of girlfriends I love juice and if you say it a certain way it sounds like you're saying I love you um JP has those creepy light blue eyes that I can't take so when he looks directly into the camera I have to look away I have to look away. I can't look him in his face. Them eyes are going to be, I can't do it. Can't do it. Next up, we have Uche and Aaliyah. So she lets him know, you know what? I felt judged and I felt like you thought that I wasn't worthy of being with you. And he was like, did I say that? Did I ask you, like, did I say that I didn't, that I thought that you would do it to me? And she was like, nigga, yes. She didn't say nigga, but that's what I was thinking. Nigga, yes, you did. You don't remember what you said? So then he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I was just caught off guard. Here's the thing. If you're caught off guard because she cheated on somebody two years ago, that's valid. But you judged her. You were judgmental. It wasn't you being very cautious or asking probing questions. You went right into lawyer cross-examination mode, and that's how you were attacking her. You were badgering the witness, sir, okay? So she feels that she's no longer, you know, she don't feel comfortable telling him stuff anymore without judgment. And I feel her. You tell me, go ahead. You can be honest. You can tell me. I tell you. And then now it turns into you acting like I'm just out here laying low and spreading it wide for everybody. She ain't dropping down and getting her ego on for everybody. She had a, a, a slip and ju- a lapse in judgment. Is it okay that she cheated? No. Is it the end of the world? No. 
Okay, so he tells her that, you know what, we'll have more disagreements in the future. We're going to have more tough conversations. Uh, He said that he has a hard time trusting people because of his past. He's scared of his feelings for her. And I feel like that's always a cop out. I feel like we hear people say that all the time on these shows, whether it's married at first sight. Uh, whether it's the ultimatum, whether it's love is blind. I'm just so scared of my feelings for you. And that's why I called you a little trifling ass, ho ass bitch. And it's like, did it take all that though? Did it take all that though? Because I'm sure it didn't. But whatever. So he knows that he has to create an environment for her to feel safe, to even want to be honest. He apologizes once again. I'm sorry, but his apologies did not seem sincere to me. His apologies seemed very, let me go on and say I'm sorry so we can move past it. They didn't seem sincere. They were very dry. They were very, matter of fact, they were very monotone. He tells her that as long as she is willing to be honest, he is willing to accept her and doesn't want to lose her. Girl, Aaliyah, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. So we get to Izzy and Stacy. So he said he's been thinking about her naked since the second day. She finds that endearing. Hmm. Huh. He doesn't like that, or excuse me, he doesn't think, he likes her because he doesn't have to think of, um, about, he doesn't have to think and worry about different things with her that he does with other women. So he talked about financial stability, you know, mental capacity, emotional stability stuff like that but he said that he's not as deep with her as he is with the other women because she's not as vulnerable she he was like we really just out here enjoying the ride she said don't that sound like more fun she then gets into her boss bitch i don't care how these other heifers think about you now i mean i ain't worried about these other girls and it's like sis you're doing a lot I just feel like, look, yes, you should be confident that you are playing your position right. So I don't fault you for that, Stacy. But I also kind of feel like Stacy. I also kind of feel like Stacy wants to come across as if she doesn't care. She's coming across too nonchalant. You're being very apathetic about the situation. No part of this conversation. Did she assure him, you know what, I can work on being vulnerable. It takes time for me to be vulnerable. She didn't do any of that. I thought that was interesting because he didn't press her on it either. She feels that she doesn't want to be with somebody she cannot have fun with. And I am tired and sick and tired and tired and sick of people coming onto these shows and feeling like I just want to have fun with somebody. Carry your ass down to the Coyote Ugly Bar where you can find somebody that is just there for a good time, not a long time. You are coming onto this show to be married. Yes, wanting to have fun should be a part of that. You don't want to be in a relationship that's very uptight or drab or whatever. But fun should not be first and foremost because y'all are here to be married. I don't know if I like Stacy. I don't know if I like Stacy. I don't dislike Stacy, but I don't know if I all the way like her either. You know what I mean? So we get to Johnny and no, yeah, Johnny and Chris. So they're talking and Chris is imagining her hanging out with the family and they play celebrity and we just sit and we laugh at the people because some of them are bogus and they're not good at it. I picture you sitting right here with us laughing. Johnny's yucking it up, right? tells her he tells her he's in love with her and he sees himself marrying her she says i'm picturing the future with us as well i am but then we see her walking into the room with izzy and she's telling izzy but you uh, or she's saying in her confessional but i have such a crush on izzy oh my gosh so we find out izzy is jehovah witness because of that if you guys know anything about that religion they don't celebrate holidays they don't celebrate birthdays so he talks about as a kid not being able to celebrate any of that stuff um if there was like a holiday party at school he either had to go home early 
or he had to just sit in the classroom by himself and watch a movie. So he tells a story about how he there was a bunch of kids on his on his block, and it was around Easter, and they were like, "Boom, we having an Easter egg hunt fall through." So he's like, "It was great. I got this sack. We're picking up the eggs. We've all done. I won't say we all. Most of us have done Easter egg hunts. When you're a kid, that shit cracks, right?" So he said he's out there having the time of his life and his father comes, yanks him, absolutely not, sir, you know what it is. So he's frustrated, goes to his cousin's house and he's ranting and raving and venting to his cousin for his cousin to be like, that ain't even your real dad. I was like, what? What? How old were you if you're having an Easter egg hunt? You got, I feel like you better be 12 and under, but so why does your cousin know and you don't? Was the cousin older? I need a lot more backstory. So now Izzy kind of felt, I mean, that would break me to pieces too. If I found out that my parents ain't my parents, you know what I mean? So after finding that out, um, Izzy said that he just doesn't know which way to turn. He didn't know what to do. He doesn't feel like he has anybody that really has his back. So that's why he like wants to marry somebody so he can, well, not just for this, but he's excited to marry somebody to join into their family traditions. Uh, He says that he left the religion, got his first Christmas tree in 2018. He said, I left that thing up till April or May. I said, okay, all right, Christmas lights. Um, She tells Izzy, Johnny, that she does have another connection, but it feels more like friendship. I said, does it? Okay. So Izzy is like, I want someone to tell me that they want me. And she's like, I'm doing it. He's like, no, tell me, say it. See, what I'm noticing about Izzy is Izzy want all the girls on him. Izzy needs a lot of self-validation. Izzy needs a lot of um, attention. He needs a lot of compliments. He like, he wants to feel wanted and he wants you to want him. He needs to actually hear you say it. And if you don't, it's almost like he's not feeling you. So Johnny is like, nope, it's you. I said, girl, girl, (laughs) I I don't know. Okay, Johnny. Okay, Johnny. So we get to JP and Taylor. He proposes like he was snotting and crying like he done knew Taylor for all the years of his life. Did y'all see that? That was a very like emotional, heartfelt proposal. I was sitting here like, oh my God, you'd have thought she um, obviously accepts. So cool. congratulations to them. So we get Chris and Johnny. She tells him that, you know what? She gets right to it. I'll give her, I'll give her credit for that. She says, I have a stronger connection with someone else. He was devastated. Devastated. He tells her, you ain't even got to stay in here because he wanted to cry in silence and in peace by himself. And I felt bad for Chris. Um, not because I think Johnny did anything wrong. She's well within her rights to, you know, pick who she feels she has the stronger connection with. But these people really be falling, falling for these people. It is kind of wild to me, but dang, man. So then we get Izzy and Johnny, and this is when shit hit the fan, okay? She comes in right away, tells him that she cut things off with her number two connection. Izzy's like, yeah, I heard. I wasn't there to witness it, but I heard. She's like, wait, was he upset? Girl, why wouldn't he be? Why wouldn't he be when just the day before y'all were talking about how y'all are, you know, y'all want to spend holidays together and build a future and start a family and all this other stuff. Yeah, he's going to be upset. He's going to feel the way. She said that Chris was her safer option. She then tells Izzy he's her only person right now. He looked perturbed by that. He didn't seem overly excited by it. Maybe it was me, but he didn't look overly excited by that at all, right? 
Izzy is nervous that she will see him and reject him. Are you that insecure about your head being bald? I guess, but I just kind of feel like people be bald every day, B. There is no reason for you to act like, I don't know. I don't, whatever, whatever. So he wants someone that is going to give him unconditional love and he's scared of being abandoned. Um, and that comes from his ex fiance who he felt gaslit him throughout the entirety of their relationship. <sighs> she asked him if he's ever had addiction issues. He was like, no, never. And she said, okay, I'm only asking because I was in a relationship with a guy that struggled from addiction. They broke up. She was with her ex-husband and she got a um, a message from a friend. I think she said on Facebook or a friend told her that the one man that she's the only man that she's ever loved. And I'm thinking, ain't you married? But that particular gentleman died from an overdose. She says, you know, her ex-husband was really just a rebound from their breakup. So... She says she's in a weird space where she doesn't want to make a mistake again. And she wants to make sure that she loves someone before fully committing. So why on God's green earth did you bring your ass on this show? Why? Where is the vetting process? Did she tell this story to any of the producers, any of the casting producers? This is crazy. So, and there's nothing wrong with her story, but the fact that you, I said this season, these people were not going to raise my pressure up. And I meant that. So Izzy is looking like he doesn't even want to take a chance on her. He is seeing all the red flags come bouncing bouncing through that wall so she acknowledges that she is a walking red flag but she's deserving of love and he's like yeah everybody is so he's very quiet he's like this the entire time not even looking at her well he can't see her but you know not looking at the uh the blue wall and she he was like well I didn't know any of this why would you you just met her she just told you she asked if it worries him he said yes (laughs) very quick yes yes it worries me uh she very smugly matter of factly matter of factly very defensively says well you got your issues and I got mine I said I know you fucking lying Johnny wow wow so he is questioning if anyone can ever fill that role for her because what it sounds like is she is still grieving and and reeling from the death of that ex-boyfriend that had the addiction doesn't seem like she's quite come to terms with it if you're still kind of looking for that to fill that void if you're still calling this man from years past the ultimate love of your life even though you were married or the only man that you have you've ever loved I, I i'm questioning things with what is he i'm right with is he questioning things so she she then says that She, well, let me back up. He's questioning that. And he basically, she says that someone can. He wants her to kind of prove it. He wants her to prove it. He feels that they should have been having a conversation about this all along. Now, this is where I I jump from Izzy's boat. And I'm I'm in the middle because now I don't, I don't know nor care. But... The way Izzy is acting is as if this person passed away within the past six months. And that's why she is like torn. You know, you see what I'm saying? Izzy is like, I don't know. It's a very weird vibe with Izzy. I don't know what it is about him, but something about him is a little off to me. But the fact that she is, um, he is like upset that because like she told you that she that she was married before she told you that 
The only thing that Izzy didn't know is that she dated a person that was, that had an addiction issue. Hell, if she didn't have it, what is that? What's it to you? Why would it bother you? I guess maybe y'all, y'all let me know down in the comments. So she said that she's not just, you know, fucking around and she doesn't know what else he wants. He, cause he keeps getting quiet and he's like, I'm overwhelmed. And basically he don't want to talk about it no more. So she like, I need you to stop being scared. Say what you want. And it's like, girl, sis, ma'am, honey, boo boo child, you are doing way too much. Johnny is coming across. Now she's coming across thirsty. Now she's coming across desperate. And why? Why is that, y'all? Because she didn't. Um, she's coming across thirsty. She's coming across desperate because you so quickly kicked Chris to the curb without Izzy ever fully committing to you that's the wild part you and Izzy didn't have an agreement about we're going to be all in with each other y'all didn't talk about that so you got rid of Chris very prematurely I he tells her that her past matters but it's not influencing anything yes it is yes it is it's influencing something yes it is It wholeheartedly is. It is. So Johnny walks back to the room with the girls and she's feeling stupid. So she feels like she made the wrong mistake. She's just fuck, fuck, fuck. And it's like, girl, you ain't got to beat yourself in the head. You don't have to do that. You can still try to get with Chris. We ain't seen Chris talking to nobody else. But she kind of feels like she got rid of the guy that actually cares. She doesn't think Izzy cares about her. She then tells the girls, if Izzy picks Stacy, he'll regret it. If he doesn't leave with me, he'll just regret it. He's not going to be happy with her. You giving crazy. You giving crazy, Heffa. That's what you're giving right now, Johnny. That's what you're giving. And then we finally get to uh, Taylor and JP. And JP, they're going to do their reveal. Taylor said that she had a dream that... <laughs> Taylor had a dream that her uh that the guy that jp was going to be blonde tan skin and really white teeth i said not him being oh for three <laughs> that man is none of that that man is absolutely totally none of that what let me know what you guys thought about everything in this episode and only this episode episode two if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to the channel thumbs up the video and i will catch you guys in the next one peace